Welcome to Becoming a Cook. I'm Charlie Wetzel. Today I want to teach you how to bone out a leg quarter. If you're a fan of dark meat, but you're not really a fan of bones at the table, this is going to be a technique that you're going to love. It's a little bit of an advanced technique, but if you've got a little bit of knife skills, I think you'll be able to do it. You'll probably see a lot of this kind of thing at the store. This is uh, four leg quarters. It was $1.49 a pound and it cost $6.20, which means if I bone these out, each of these will be $1.55. A lot of times you'll see a big bag of leg quarters for 79 cents a pound, a 10 pound one. So that's a really economical thing. Or you can do this with a whole chicken. If you've seen my other video on boning out a chicken, that shows you how to separate the breasts so that they're boneless. And then with the leg quarters, if you follow this, you'd be able to do those boneless and you'd be able to have four pieces of meat from a whole chicken boneless to serve at a dinner. I'm going to use a chef's knife because that's what I'm used to. I have a boning knife here too, so I'll go ahead and bone one out with a boning knife as well. When you get leg quarters in the store, they typically have part of the backbone on them. So this backbone has been sawn straight in half. You're going to want to begin with this little piece of meat that's right here that I grew up calling the oyster. And I'm just going to try to get my knife in here and scoop that. Now, if you weren't able to get that, it wouldn't be the end of the world but you want to try to put as much meat as you can uh, on this piece and not leave it on the bone. So I start that cut there. Then I'm going to use my knife and I'm going to hold down this backbone and I'm going to break the joint. And all I'm doing is I'm disjointing this and you can see here's the bone. And then I want to just draw my knife through where the joint was and there's meat here that I want to pick up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I was trying to get too much meat, so I got it a little stuck there. And then the way I'm doing this, I'm going to leave the skin on because when I cook a piece of chicken, I like to leave the skin on because it provides moisture. If you're trying to cut calories, you could cook it with the skin and then take the skin off. You'd be losing a lot, but you'd be thinner than I am. <laughs> so next, I want to just draw a line on this thigh bone. So I've drawn a line all the way down to the joint, and then I want to scrape it and expose that bone. Then I want to just draw a line on the side of the bone with my knife. So you can see it's starting to separate the bone. This is where it starts to get tricky. I'm going to gather this skin and meat here with this hand, and I'm going to do it in such a way that my hand is clear and away from this bone. And then I'm going to take my knife and put it behind the bone and go straight down. So now I'm starting to get the other side of this bone, but I don't want to lose this meat here either. So I'm going to cut and scrape down the bone on these other three sides. I now have this bone exposed down to this joint. Laying this back down, there's a bone that runs there, which I'm sure you know in this drumstick. I'm going to draw a line with the knife again right down there in line with the bone. From there, I'm going to want to cut. So I'm cutting around that joint. So this is the whole joint. I'm, I'm leaving it whole. Now I want to pick this back up again and cut along the side there. And I'm just pulling this meat back as I cut it. I'm going to cut on this side. Same thing. I'm cutting this meat away. Now I'm scraping towards the end of the drumstick. And I just want that skin to cut, flip it. Once again, I'm gathering this meat and I'm pulling it back. The reason I'm pulling it back is because I want this tight, but I also want to keep my fingers clear. The farther back you hold your fingers, the more protected they are. And then the other thing I'm going to do to protect myself is I'm not going to point my knife blade towards myself. I'm going to point it away towards the bone. And I'm just going to give this a cut. Now there's a bayonet bone that runs here and I've got a feel to see whether I separate it and I didn't. The bone is still stuck to this, this large bone. I've got some meat here. I'm going to cut that. So you can see I'm getting more and more of this bone out as I go. This is another tricky part here. I want to cut alongside this joint. 
If I cut too close, I get part of the joint. If I cut too far away, I lose some of the meat. So I'm trying to split the difference and I'm slicing, slicing, and I'm pushing the bone away at the same time. And there's my bone. So you can see there's a little bit of meat on this, but not very much. What I've got left is a boneless leg quarter. So I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to look for any ragged edges. There's a little bit of a tendon here that was on the drumstick. This is where the drumstick was. I'm just going to cut that off and get rid of it. I'm going to look for any excess skin. I'm feeling a little bit of bone right here that I cut off with the meat. So I'm just going to carefully take that off. Now, this doesn't look very elegant. It looks a little bit raggedy on this side. But you can see the skin's intact. And when this cooks, this meat shrinks. And this actually makes for a nice, pretty solid piece of meat. Now I'm going to do one with the boning knife. With this boning knife, I can actually probably get a little bit better into this little curved area here. You want to use the tip of your knife and just kind of give it a little turn. Now I'm using the knife to hold the backbone down. I'm breaking that joint. And then I'm just running this knife close to the bone right along there. This excess skin and fat, actually I'm going to leave that on for a second so you can see it. I'll trim it off later. So there's my, my backbone. Now draw a line on this bone and then shave on one side, shave on the other side. And my fingers, even if I put this knife through here, my fingers are far enough back that I'm not going to get cut. Now I'm drawing this flesh and skin back knife behind the bone. And this little bit here that I missed, I'm just going to go ahead and do that with it. Now I'm going to draw the line again here on that bone. Give it a scrape. Turn this. Draw this meat back. Keep my fingers clear. Knife pointed towards the bone. Knife down. Check for the bayonet bone. This time, the bone went with the meat. So what I have to do is I'm going to feel for it. Just hold it this way, like this. And I can feel it there. I'm going to just place my knife. My knife is pointed away from me. There, between the skin and the bone. And I'm just going to gently pull this flesh away. And I'll, move the, I'll pull that bone out so you can see it. When I get here, I need to cut this bridge, so to speak. So I'm going to make a cut so I can hold this back. And I'm trying to avoid cutting into the cartilage. I'm trying to avoid losing meat. And I'm trying to not cut the skin or my fingers. Now that little bone I was telling you about, the bayonet bone, if you have eaten a drumstick, you will have come across this bone. So here it is. There's a pointy end here, and there's a little, I guess that's kind of a club shape on the back end. So on this one, this extra skin and fat I don't want, so I'm just going to pull my knife through that, take it off, that goes in the stock pot. In our house, we really love dark meat. Uh, Stephanie and I, that's our, our first choice. Charlie, that's his first choice. Um, our daughters usually took the white meat when they were kids. Actually, if, I, if I'm really honest, Stephanie and I gave the white meat to the kids when they were little. They didn't know any better. We liked the dark meat better. Most people think white meat's better. We really knew the secret was dark meat. <laughs> As Charlie got older, he realized dark meat was better, so that's his first choice. Hannah, my cook, she also picks uh, dark meat. 
Abby wants boneless. Whatever's boneless is what she'll take. So she's happy with this as well. I hope you'll give this a try. Be careful with your fingers. Use a knife that is the right size for you. A chef's knife, a boning knife, a utility knife. Any of those is fine. Like I said, if it's a little bit raggedy, it doesn't matter because when you cook it, all that goes away and, and all people see is a boneless piece of meat and when they find that that's dark meat, if they're dark meat lovers like we are, they're going to love it. Thanks for joining us today on Becoming a Cook.